Hello guys, this is V and today we are going to talk about Go, Postgres and how to connect them. Wow, this is one of my favorite topics, you know, when it comes to building backends. So this is one of the ways you can actually build backend in 2018 and it is way, way more exciting. Okay. So uh, just before I start the tutorial and all uh, the kind of exercises, I just want you guys to let you know that this is not a beginner level course for Go or Postgres. This is sort of like an intermediate uh, uh, course uh, or a series uh, where I won't be talking about the beginning aspects of Go or Postgres, but I'm going to talk about how you guys can communicate using Go to Postgres. Means how you guys can build backend where you're writing all of your model logic in Go, but actually you are pushing data to Postgres. So, uh, so just mind that uh, if you don't have uh, enough knowledge about go or postgres you guys can just uh, guys can just research it out you know see other uh, tutorial series and everything and if you think or if you want me to go through that you know just let me know and i'll build uh, videos for you uh, about go or postgres no worry at all okay so what is go now if you guys reach here right uh, just you know then it means that you are familiar with the go and all the advantages of the go so i actually don't want to tell you because you already know that but i just want to say that it's amazing it's modern and it's here to stay and it's it's, it's a long long uh, time based you know pr uh, prepared programming language uh, which is planned really good for the long term uh, uh, staying in the industry if you're learning go i think you're at the right place and in, in, on the right career choice you made and other thing is postgres okay what is postgres now it's a database right it's uh, it's been here like almost forever i guess and uh, well it's again one of the most used open source uh, database uh, when it comes to sql in the world it's competing with oracle and ms sql and all those kind of things but one of the important thing is postgres provides way way many features you know that any other database in the whole world postgres is a sql database but it has support for you know key value stores it has support for uh, json related things bison related things i mean it's amazing they have such text based searching in in built inside so i think it should be really good but in this tutorial we are not going to go that advanced uh, we are just going to see how we can leverage uh, go and postgres to build simple uh, you know uh, models uh, and uh, based on that uh, backend so any language any programming language you use right you actually need some way to communicate with the database now you can actually not <coughs> write your wire uh, protocols you know uh, by hand so for that you have libraries you know some people have come uh, you know contributed well fortunately in go there are a lot of libraries when it comes to postgres uh, go even has uh, official support for all the sql right uh, sql uh, databases uh, still there are a few uh, orms and everything which are really popular uh, so one of them is GoRM, which i haven't uh, i'm not going to talk about because it's generalized orm for uh, postgres mysql and ms sql and all other kind of databases right so they are actually opting out other features you know so that i actually don't like if you want to build orm right it should be perfect and it should be concentrated toward one thing and go pg is one of the orm that i like to use on my day-to-day -day work uh, when i use go and postgres uh, because it's it, it is concentrated to our postgres you know it doesn't give a uh, damn about mysql or mssql why because well Postgres is being used uh, way more than uh, those databases. I mean, MySQL is again one of the popular choice of people, you know, when they're building, uh, where, where they build database backends. So uh, this is a PG, uh, which is sort of like ORF for Golang and Postgres, you know, it provides uh, some added performance. Uh, so it's really good features well they have all the basic support for when it comes to the time serial i mean serializing packets or serializing uh, types from go to postgres so uh, you don't need to worry about anything else they also provide you know table to struct mapping so if you you can just write struct and it will get converted to table automatically so you don't need to like i don't know manage all those kind of things and uh, yeah they have other support for h store also they have a good support for transaction prepared statements uh, 
they have a uh, support for notification which is kind of like unique because uh, let's see how it pans out actually uh, we'll see in the future you will love it uh, that's what i think and they have support for uh, timeouts and uh, connection pooling is also there and they have on conflict which is like new feature that came out in postgres for like 9.3 9.4 which is sort of like upset operation you know if insert fails you can actually write another query which will run when in the case of insert fails yeah so they have bulk uh, insert update deletes which is really good and they have support for migration and sharding which we'll also be looking into uh in the future so this is like a sort of like a driver and uh this is how it works and uh i think we should get started then you know without i think wasting your time hello guys this is vijay and uh in this video we are going to talk about getting started with the project you know we'll do setup and everything before we do i just want you guys to install a little bit utility called glide glide is nothing but a package management for go if you are using go for a long time you may <coughs> you might uh, be knowing about that so uh go has uh, by default go get uh stuff you know but it's not that much useful when you want to do a good level of project management so i use glide i already had installed if you didn't install it's very easy you just have to copy this and uh, paste it on your uh, terminal and it should be good good to go and then you can just do glide in it on your non glide uh, projects and it's it will just scan it out and initialize everything and uh, uh, so the configuration file is in glide.yaml i don't think you will have to maybe ever touch that file again uh, it'll, everything will be done command line so don't worry so it's that easy you know and if you whenever you want to install any dependency you just do glide get and the path that's it okay so let's get started so i have glide installed already as you can see i'm just going to clear it out and i'm going to create a new uh folder all pg tutes i'll go to pg tutes okay i'm just gonna do glide in it okay now as you can see we have a glide.yaml let just do glide.yaml just see nothing right because it tried to scan our uh, directory but couldn't find any you know go file to scan <coughs> so that's why it did uh, not scan anything and it didn't put anything in the glide.yaml but just initialization okay now let's just uh go to here and just instead of go get we'll do glide uh, get with uh, this much okay so we need this as a dependency in our project i'll just clear it out okay i'll just do glide get this path and it's downloading now so what this thing will going to do glide will going to do it's just going to do go get and it's going to actually store it in glide.yaml so whenever you for example two guys are working right and you actually do some change and push it another guy will pull it right and in, in that time if you did any dependency right it'll actually you know can uh, download from there on top of that this is like vendor dependency okay so these are not like global dependency these are like project specific dependency so for example if you see the vendor folder right you will uh, will see github.com and uh, then uh, go pg and see so this will locally uh uh, install your dependency so uh, it won't affect for example if you're using one version of go pg in here and if you want to update in some other project right then you can actually do that so that's why it manages separate separate local versions of your dependency of your libraries <coughs> okay so uh, this was uh, so we actually got uh, let's just do vim glide and check it out oh sorry vim glide dot uh, yaml now as you can see it's importing you know uh, this and version is this so it's very easy close it so this is it we uh, actually uh, downloaded our go pg dependency and let's now uh, start the server okay so i have a postgres locally installed okay and uh, other thing is this is pg admin you know for the simplicity i'm using pg admin and as you can see i already have connected uh, to pg admin okay so i have a two database right now postgres and tutes so i'm just going to okay so this is like tutes uh, 
already uh, created a new database okay so we are going to trying to connect with the dudes so before we go that i just want to say just uh, you know finish the with the done with, sorry i just want to be done with the project setup uh so i'm just going to open that folder now uh go to learning and then yeah i do so many learnings yeah so this is our project we opened it <coughs> okay welcome so i'm using a vs code uh because it's well it's really good i guess one of the thing is it's really good and see it's uh, they have inbuilt terminal and all those kind of things so i like those uh, okay so i'm in here and uh here is our glide.yaml you know i'll just make the font little bit smaller so yeah that's it i think it's i'm pretty sure you guys can see this okay now uh we have a vendor <coughs> and as you know we need to create a main dot go file okay this is our gonna be our main file okay i'm, I'm using vim bindings okay in the uh, vs code so it's gonna be like something like that package okay and i'm just doing you know hello a little bit hello world thing okay port Dog. Print a line. Print if I like to. Sorry. Oh, it's funk. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for that. That was like some weird mistake. Going to install some dependency, I guess. <clears throat> it's a VS related. Don't worry about that. Don't focus on that. And uh, just close this. Yeah. So this is our hello world. Let's just uh, compile it and check it out how it works. I'll just go here. I'll open the terminal. Let's go to terminal and it's here. I'm just gonna do go build. It built successfully. Now we have a pgtut binary. I'm just going to run pgtut. Hello world. Well, as you can see, so this was our project setup. Okay. So uh, after that, uh, from next tutorial, what we are going to do is we are going to create a separate package just for the database related things, and we are going to start putting stuff inside that database. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I'll see you next tutorial. Hello, guys. So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about how to connect with the database using a driver called GoPG. Okay, pretty simple. So the last tutorial, what we did, we created a structure, we created, you know, just a framework, we, uh, uh, you know, created this whole Glide related, uh, uh, you can say project. So Glide is a package manager, which will, we are going to use to, you know, install dependencies and keep track of which version of the dependency we are using and everything you know glide will take care of it so if you see here right see you can say package and version right <coughs> so we are just using go pg nothing else we are using so it just shows that okay so let's get started so what we are going to do now we are going to create a new package called db why that well because we want everything else that we are doing you know into one uh, package so all the database related functionality right you will be putting in one package it's that simple you know you don't need to worry about anything else just so what why like this well if you are software developer you will know that you know <laughs> packaging your uh, separating your code modules you know into packages is good if your multiple developers are working right you can work on your db uh, part and you know other guy can work on the api part and you will never be, be colliding your code or anything like that so it'll be separated yeah that's it there is no actual reason you know you can actually write it down the whole db related things in the main.go and it'll work just fine but the code won't be maintainable so i would not suggest you to do that 
yeah so okay let's uh, create a package we created a package we'll just call it uh, we'll create a new file inside that db package we'll call it main.go now you can call whatever you want if you are if you are doing a go then you might know package db let's import our uh, driver for github.com slash go pg that's it we can alias it using here like this now we are going to create a function called connect which is going to connect to database and we are going to test it out it's that easy nothing fancy or anything now i have a local version running okay so let's just connect it password okay as you can see i was able to connect uh, to uh, the local and if you see list of tables and you know list of table spaces so this is a tool called pgcl i'm using for mac os because i couldn't find psql for mac os i'm sorry guys this is pretty familiar uh, if, if you are familiar with psql this should work fine for you and this is uh, i think a little bit i like it because uh, you know uh, it gives a really nice auto complete you know so you can just check it out these are like your table spaces and uh, just by doing d plus you'll be like okay give me the database but i don't have any database so okay we got it <coughs> okay go back to the code and now what we are going to do is we are going to try to connect to that database okay for x sorry for, for before that we need to create a database so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, write query called create database mm. okay we already have one database called postgres but uh no sorry we already have a database called dudes so we are going to like describe okay I did not connect through Postgres. Yes, I did connect through Postgres. Mm, okay, I think we have a uh, database called uh, Tutes. So we are going to try to connect to the database. Okay, uh, let's get started then. I'm kind of new <laughs> with that PGCLI tool, so forgive me if you know uh, I seem a little bit confused. Don't worry about that. Let's just try and you know just connect through the Go, right? The which is our main purpose. You know, instead of going through all that. Oh shit tools and stuff yeah one of the thing about go if you are not using the uh, dependency that you are you imported it's it'll go away so be careful with that okay now i'm just going to create db is equal to uh, pg dot so there are method called pg dot connect okay so this is it is that easy as you can see all you have to do is pg dot connect it'll give of course you'll be like hey where where do i need to you know give host and user and port and everything okay so for that we have something called options so we'll create options pointer to option is gonna be like db dot options options okay and inside that they have a user which will be in here vj that's me and uh, then then i'm gonna have a password is going to put vj vj because it's a local and you guys cannot do anything about it <laughs> another one is address and our address is a column separated uh, column separated uh, you know a url and port so localhost 5432 sounds good so these are like three fields which are mandatory it should be okay yeah okay so it's showing their undefined db oh sorry should be pg nice now what we are i'm going to do i'm going to pass on this oops in here perfect <coughs> db declared and not used now what will happen if it will connect it will give us a pointer so db is nothing it's a pointer okay so if you were to write something like this you can write something like where db of type pg dot sorry of type pointer pg dot db is equal to this so you can say this is the type that we are talking about 
okay db declared and not used of course so this is a pointer right so what will happen in the case of it will fail it will throw an empty pointer which is a nil pointer so if db is equal to nil means we'll just do log dot printf okay it's gonna be something like fail to connect to database that's it and you can just do after that os dot exit with reason i don't know some number 100 like hey i failed to connect okay else okay else we don't need to write because it's gonna crash anyway in case if it doesn't you know printf i'm gonna be like uh okay connection to database successful sounds good now you have a db object whatever you want to do you can do and after doing that what you have to do is <coughs> close it okay so once you are done with the db hole because if you are creating an api right then it will take long time you know otherwise you can just close it out so how you will close so it'll be like close error is equal to db dot close this should close it check for the close error if his close error is not equal to nil hence uh, printf error while closing the connection can you print it out the error how you do the percentage v right reason so these are like good way to uh, write the logs okay so when it will print it will show you those error you will figure it out what ha what went wrong and you can just do it dot exit you need to crash your program somehow after that or you can just say log dot printf connection closed play and just return that's it as you can see this is our basic let's compile and check it out we'll go in here okay go build it compiled as you can see we have pg new binary let's run it out it okay now what went wrong because we created the function but we never used it right so i'll just go to main.co okay this is gonna get tricky and i need to get that package so i'll be like uh db Oops. okay I'm gonna prefix with db and hello world after that i'll be like just calling call db dot let me check if that's the right define db dot yeah why because small c so it's a private function okay you see the error is gone let's see uh oh sorry go build compile successful let it out boom as you can see hello world connection to database successful and connection closed successfully which means yes we were able to successfully connect to database and connection after using we actually close the connection now you will be like okay this seems really good but how do i do queries and how do i insert data and you know do all those kind of things right uh, which you need to do when you are building really highly scalable uh, server applications so don't worry guys you know in the next tutorial we are going to talk about but before that you know doing all the query and everything you need to understand the model how you will be able to you know convert the go types into uh, <coughs> sql types and all those uh sql related pg uh, types to go type right because serialization deserialization library all already provides you know you don't need to do that 
so next tutorial we are going to uh, uh, you know uh, space create some strokes and you know we'll actually uh, create a table according to those strokes and then we'll see how it works out and everything okay guys see you next tutorial hello guys my name is vj as you know and in this tutorial we are going to talk about model definitions okay so now what is model definition so for example if you are using some sort of uh, language with some sort of database right so what you want is you want language specific data types to convert into postgres or some other database specific data types right and you don't want to do that you know so for that you have these libraries you know so and uh, one of the library that uh, we are using right now is gopg that we are discussing and let's see how go pg this i know converts all of your go uh data types i'm sorry uh to uh postgres data types okay so when it comes to database right so database is like the root inside that you have tables uh, uh you know uh concept of tables so those tables are equal to uh structs in go or go pg okay so uh, you can actually define all of your table as a struct and all of your field as a column of the table it's that easy okay so this is a simple uh, you know concept of a product uh, table that i just created you know in five minutes so this is just to show you guys you know how it uh, feels like so this is a, a, you know, a model of product that we are going to create okay so let's create wasting a lot of time say product.go okay, in the db yes. how gonna be db now to create a uh, struct uh, uh, product type product i was just checking if the autocomplete is working okay so now this is is equal to <coughs> okay so now when you are going to use a uh, pg right i'm just going to write down some comment how it's going to behave so when you will actually run this uh, go pg migration or go pg create table right that we'll be seeing in just uh, maybe next tutorial what it's going to do it's going to create a table name products okay so now the na name of the table is going to be products why because one thing it'll do it'll actually do uh you know all the camel uh see this kind of capitalized cases right it's going trying to make it in camel cases separated by underscores uh, so if you if you write something like product item right so it's going to create a table called product items product items so, so what is happening is it's separating by underscore all the capitalized uh, uh, words that you're writing and it's pluralizing it why because this truck represent one item right but table will have collection of items you know so it's tight it tries to do that so whenever uh, you create table just keep in mind that but of course if you don't want that and you want to manually write your name of the table so there is a uh, field called table name okay this is a private field so remember all the exported fields or public fields you know who's uh, where uh, uh, the name of the field start with the capital uh, letter are gonna be actually working all the private fields like this they are just gonna get ignored so you don't need to worry about that struct we can just uh, product item like <clears throat> okay Good. now what is happening is uh, whenever uh, you know go pg will try to uh, uh, create the table it will look for this field if it field contains this then now our table name is go not gonna be like this this is like the default way of doing but we are overriding with uh, product items collection okay okay now let's create something called id integer okay so this is whenever you are typing id or id so it's going to track it it's uh, trying to make a primary key out of it 
so this is going to be our id and let me just check other fields uh name unique uh, you can also like you know change your uh column uh, details also using uh sql tag sql you want to change the name of the id it's going to be like id okay and you can also give this is primary key manually it's gonna get converted to primary key but you can give manually like this you can give primary key okay and the thing is this is a good practice in a way so i'm actually trying to make this thing unique so you can see works right so this is how you give the constraints and everything you just try to remember that you need to use sql at column level okay and it is good practice to just give your name here just to make sure okay the details we have in description in price description path now one another thing i would like to what if you want to change the type so you can just change the type by you know real because if you do float 64 by default it will try to do numeric or something like that but i want real you know small uh number small floating by number something like that so this is how you can change your postgres type So this is our whole data med, uh, model got just created. <clears throat> so whenever we'll run the command <coughs> called create table, right? It'll actually get all the properties and all the details and it'll try to uh, create a table out of it. Okay, so I think nothing is. What was this? Yeah, see, we just created a table. Okay, and I'm just going to close this. And it is a good practice, you know, all the models you create in a separate uh, Go file. So as you can see, it's going to be like. Export a type. And, um, somewhere on. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, this is uh, uh, almost done. Uh, so this is how the modeling works okay now you might want to know uh, what type you are supporting right also here's the thing hmm. so these are all the types that we are uh, supporting uh, when it comes to go pg okay so these are the go types and these are the postgres types so if you see integer rate you add it's going to be small int 16 32 integer and this and that float 32 is going to be real Float 64 is going to be double precision that we actually talked about. Bool is going to be boolean. Sync is going to be text. Byte is going to be byte array. If you are actually embedding another struct or map or array, it's going to be JSON B. Remember, this is really good. You want to try? Okay. Uh, we can actually try it out on features. Actually, we can just embed uh, another. Uh, okay. We can just give feature name. Hmm. Name is gonna be 
feature a uh, feature uh, description is gonna be and i don't know importance you know how important the feature is going to be it's sort of like rating or private uh, uh priority i'm just gonna make it integer just to you know okay, no, I know. so this should get converted to json b or you can what you can do is you give type and b i mean right how hard it is as you can see it's really easy see? okay so this is how you do even if you create a map right map will also convert into the if you create array it's gonna be just and be nice time to time that we are doing is gonna be timestamp with time zone and ip addresses we don't have so i think that's it okay what if you want to ignore some field okay for example i don't know you you want to use it for example uh for the struct purpose but you don't want it in the table so um, i don't know uh, let me just get a name okay something like uh, ref pointer okay just a uh, ref pointer is just a reference number you know nothing else to do with the database so what we can do is we can actually give like sql underscore so, sorry not underscore gonna be sql yes so what this is going to do is this is going to ignore this field okay so Whenever the conversion is a conversion is happening from go PG to uh, PG or go to PG, you know, uh, other side this will get ignored, you know. So you can use it as a struct, normal struct data type in the uh, whenever you're using the go. But when you're using it for uh, for the reference of the database, this this won't even create a uh, column in the database, so it won't be present. So this is how you can ignore uh, the field that you ignore. So I think this was it, you know, when it comes to modeling. So this is like the very basic modeling. If you actually want to get into the detail, right, you can actually go to the GoPG model definition, Wikipedia, you know, and you can check it out, all the details. I think this is uh, all they have, I guess. I mean, this is all it requires, you know, all the all the other things going to be in the database specific that you will have to write it in the database, you know, so. So, okay, uh, so the next tutorial, guys, we are going to see how to create a table uh, using uh, GoPG, you know, directly without writing any queries like create table this and these columns and everything else. Okay, uh, see you then. Hello, guys. So, well, in last video, we have seen that, okay, how to create model definitions and everything. Let's create a table out of this model definitions now, right? Okay. So I'm just going to uh, write a function to create a table out of it. So I'm just going to be like function uh, create broad items table. Okay, this is like my function, so don't worry. I treat an error, nothing else. Okay. Now. Uh, it's very easy to write a create table okay you need a little bit of options so all the create rela table related options are stored i'll just copy from protocol okay or i mean another sub module in pg uh, which contains some options so we, first of all we will create options required to create a table they are not required but i think one of the options specifically you should write just put to be on the safe side or m dot uh, create table options one is if not exist true so this option will tell uh go pg that only create table if it's not if it doesn't exist you know just don't create it if it's already there right so what happens is this suppresses one kind of error so for example if you are running your script right and it's all automated and you know you just you don't check before creating and everything so it'll throw an error while creating the table so you, this is good if it's already that then it'll just ignore it it won't create it and it, it won't even throw an error okay now just create uh create error with uh, okay i also need a db i guess because reference db okay so db of type pg dot db pg imported 
paste pg how, how do you create so we will have a database reference it'll just be like db dot create table it's that easy give the model definition which is a uh, reference to empty product item object and options that we had okay got created okay now let's check if create error is to nil then just log it out print f uh, error while creating table order terms reason is get error and we we'll just do return we get error else dot printer table product get error well, our function is ready it I'll, okay so when we connect to the uh, connect to the db right here will be just like error that i don't actually want to check i'll just create products table with the db reference that we had and that's all required before closing the connection okay let's compile it uh For that because I already get uh, that so I just need to delete it I guess mm. just check it out if it's already there delete it first okay so nothing is there no. Uh, compile program it's compiled okay table product items created successfully as you can see let's just go here and check it out yes we have product items collection let's if you want to see in detail you can just do the there you go so as you can see this gives all the structure right so see id is a big int it's a next value it's a serial right as we you know discussed uh, by default and uh, primary key id already took it right and name is a text description is text this see feature is a json b as you can see right and created this time zone with times boolean and everything and this is the unique key that we created you know so this is how it works you know we just create a table out of coding without even writing a single query this is really good what the options right if for example if you'll run it again right it's just saying table product item created why because it's ignoring the fact but it's not actually creating again and again if you see right it's just the same table but if you'll remove this option okay this this option let's see how this pans out now it well error by creating table why because relation this already exists as you can see right now you don't want to check this again and again you know you just want to ignore it so why you just put this it's a healthy way of doing things i guess okay as you can see it's working so guys this was uh, this is how you create the table okay next tutorial we are going to talk about how to insert uh, some data in the table boom thank you guys hey guys <clears throat> let's talk about uh, inserting some data now okay ah, so you have an object you created an object you have this api that get called and you know you create this object 
and you want to insert some data into or you want to insert some product items in do that okay so let's just you know it's it's pretty easy actually so let's create a function uh, it'll just receive product item product items uh, receiver i'm just going to call this save it'll, it'll take db of pointer uh, pg dot argument it'll just return so inserting is pretty easy okay so let's just see works well uh it's gonna be like insert error db dot insert i mean it's that easy i'll just pass on reference of my item which is pi that's it and if i'll be like if set error is not equal to nil then error while being new item to db oh sorry to print some reason so percentage used for printing out the interfaces by the way might be thinking turn okay otherwise but hmm Item. This is we created the same function, it's going to insert it. Okay, now we need to call this function. So we're just gonna go to main. Okay, main will have db, so it's easy. Okay, should have gone to this. So I might make some change, some changes. So when we connect, right, we should give a reference to db. Uh, we should be like pointer to pg dot db. Return this db. Okay, so we're gonna remove a couple of things like uh, closing up the connection. We're gonna remove from here. Uh, put it for well, now. We won't even bother about that uh, closing anymore. I'm just going to get the connection, try to create the table if it's not exist. Require <coughs> okay. Now there's a written TB. So, this is our video. Okay, now write your code here because this is integrated now you go to main.co okay you create another uh, save product and take a uh, pg <coughs> I'll ask for db pointer here because to well, I don't think we will need uh, we will need this yeah so, pointer okay. now what I'm doing here I'm just going to create a new product here, okay? How do you do that? It's simple. Uh, new product item is equal to db dot product Of the 
let's just create this item now huh? id we don't need to give uh we'll give something like uh name is gonna be you now yes okay guys so let's create an object in here okay uh one second okay so i'm just going to give a name of the product one to copy all the name description product description this is a test data <coughs> oops this is the main path front Good five dollars i mean right oh, no big deal this picture on description and I had something else I guess something to do with uh, importance okay. right okay it's a bummer Yeah, so that's why you might want to, you know, if you want to, uh, if you don't want to add like a non struct, create uh, some other subtype or something. These are the techniques that you might want to learn, you know. It's going to be create. Then it is time dot now. Edit it time dot now. Here is show boy. That's it. We created the whole product as you can see. Let's save it now. So we already have a DB option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like uh, okay, we give this a DB DB ref because we already have one DB given. Okay. Now what we're going to do is uh oh Okay, to db ref. What's a pgdb? And we have another. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do product item dot. We created save function instead, if you if you remember. Mm, but for that, we need a pointer as you are. And it'll ask for uh, db ref. That's it, and it'll written to me. I'm just going to call this here product with pg db. And as you can see, everything works. Let's compile and check it out. Well, it compiled. Wow, product. Product one inserted successfully. Let's see. And this is select star from. What was the name of the table? I always forget. <laughs> uh, product. I'm just going to copy this from. 
well as you can see we have our first product <coughs> okay so name is product one description is product one description this is image path price is 4.5 as you can see feature is a json with values i added right i didn't do any encoding decoding it's all done by the pg go pg it's amazing created at time it took care of your updated took care of and exactly took care of. this is how you insert okay now what if you actually want like uh, you want look to return that whole product you know whenever you insert right you want that whole product is written so that also we can do so i just go to here this is the insert save right so you can create some another function something like pi sometimes you know you might want to have that whole struct written to you you know updated or something like that so we'll be save and return okay so let's create a function called save and return it will again for db it's gonna be pg dot instead of just return it will return a tuple with pointer to a product your product item and error in case okay so how do you do that it's very simple okay so first we need uh, we already have a product that we want to insert here but we need to create a new uh, okay so let's try it out Insert error by dot del Sorry, uh, it's gonna be like db dot model by dot returning. Okay, and you give give me everything in return, then insert. okay so it'll give you result as well as errors will be result result error <coughs> if insert error is then log dot printf error one Thing. and I also might want to know what one you got uh, L because you need to return to right is log dot print here. item better fully i'll do another look i just want to know what is actually we got right so received new value result is percentage so zero no type so that will print it out and then we'll return pi and let's see i'm just reading pi just for the sake of it you know we'll here this is got to the actual main and we'll just update the product name to two because that's a unique field okay everything just keep up uh, everything else should be same doesn't matter but instead of save i'll be save done should give new product item sorry 
updated product item yeah Think like this it should give okay okay what if we just don't because we don't need it right so just remove it otherwise i might have to print it out here again the same thing will happen let's come back check it out oh uh, yes <clears throat> no error okay insert it successful new result is this <clears throat> okay so we have a reference and we have this so we need to actually get into the result and see what is actually written okay so we'll go here let's just say result dot we will get model rows affected and rows written right so rows affected is uh, uh we need to uh okay let's check it out uh so what was that in that mm, here insert result dot model will give us or a model dot i think it's gonna throw an error because of primary right yeah see this is how you realize you know that the thing is get got inserted or something like that hmm okay it's a freaking pointer but you got the idea right so you can actually get uh, okay let's see uh, other thing hmm the rows affected yeah because error yeah this gets yes so that might also be into just all the things that they're providing right they're pointers you know so you might have to convert and you know do uh, decasting and stuff like that but you got the idea right this is how insert works and okay, the other things as a other kind of insert is bulk insert okay that i thought i should talk about it bulk insert is uh, it's like you know inserting multiple items okay product item uh, save multiple i'll ask for like you know um items dot 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 if you know go then this is called okay product items us references of product item error Good see how multiple works very easy all you have to do is you know wait set error db oh we need db also sorry like d gonna be like pointer to p or d and this should be pointer not reference okay <clears throat> how are you gonna do that okay what is going on here hmm with the final parameter okay let's you not just use something like this in here we put it here because it's very adic function parameters so, yeah it won't be able to find it out then okay looks good now i'm going to do db dot uh, model so model is actually when you want to insert so i'll be like items okay insert that's it Hmm. Well, I think I'll yeah. I'll give you some results. Did I told you right number of rows affected and stuff like that. So we actually don't need that thing. Let's see. I'll score it. If that error is not equal to nil, print f. Error while inserting bulk item. Reason being, see what is the reason? <clears throat> uh, error. Third error. Oh. 
Ausführen. Ball. And as you can see, we did bulk. Ah, oh, what we're gonna do? Let's call create a couple of these items. The same function. I don't wanna, you know, so much called. I'm just going to write two product. It's gonna be product number five. Function name that we give it save. Well, first was the period, uh, reference, and other was terms very adding. Okay, and change to UPR. Got it. PR. Hmm. We have DB do DB ref. We have ref. Yeah. Multiple. Okay. 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 Um. Oh, new PI one is function written the way it's written is a little bit wrong, but that's okay. Not uh, error while inserting bulk items reasons model not pointer. Okay, I need to give pointers, and I'm giving the pointers. Hmm. Okay, let's see what is going on. Pointer. As a pointers, I can do <coughs> instead of this and just you know, very addict, right? And so much for very addict functions. Uh, then I'll have to create a uh, total term to array but, uh, uh, the dot product. Hmm. What do you think? Good to me. Total. Mm -hmm. What is going on in here? Okay. In something like this, yes, got it. Sorry for my misunderstanding with that thing. I think they are asking to give non pointers. Okay, Let's see, you go here. Okay, I think I got it, man. You need to give something like you cannot just give array, you need to give something like uh, zero. Terms. This is how it's supposed to be. Yes, see, this is supposed to be. You need to give erratic functions. You cannot give array, and I give array. My bad. Let's just check it out if everything is there. Select our uh, title. Hello, guys. Hmm. So let's talk about uh, uh, parameter placeholders. Okay. So 
you have written any kind of uh, queries before right you might know that you know when you write the query you actually instead of embedding the value you actually embed a placeholder like questions or dollar or something like that and they just give the uh, query after that uh, write that value after that you know so that uh, mostly in other drivers it um, you know helps again SQL injections and those kind of things it also does in P go PG uh, so let's get started okay so I'm just going to just give you a simple demo if you don't know already what it is so I'm just going to create a small function go you know the solder demo okay we'll wait for Expect uh, dot TV. Okay. Now what we are going to do, we will have uh, some value that we would like to uh, get scanned. Okay. So what what essentially is happening? We'll do some query, and whatever that query will return, right? We'll actually put it inside this. Uh, okay. So let's just run the query db dot query. Okay let's see the signature of this so this query is actually a function that takes model okay and a particular query and uh, whatever uh, input parameters that you are giving and it will give you result and error result we don't care because it will give you number of affected and this error yes uh, select error okay db dot query first one is the model model means what model means the data that you actually are expecting to put so db dot scan okay. sorry not db pg dot will actually in, uh, so this is where you actually going to get uh, your values so for example if you are your query is written in five columns right so actually you want to scan all of the five columns in here so this is where it uh, comes into the play so that is first second one is query uh, so I'll just say query and third one is params. Okay, param is I'll just put like some sort of value 42 for example. A query I'll have to write query type string is equal to sorry select question mark. Now as you can see, oops sorry. As you can see, I've added question mark. So the question mark here is a placeholder, right? A placeholder is something that you put uh, inside the query, okay? And whenever you are actually running in some function, right, you expect that is to be replaced by some particular value. So in this case, what will happen is this query is actually this query, right? I'm just, you know, I just I added it as a, a variable. Now, whenever this query will compile, right? So the Go PG will expect this. Uh, sorry, Go PG will actually try to put this 42 in place of question. Okay. So what the query says is that return whatever value that you are giving as a input. Okay. So let's just see. Okay. First of all, if select error is not to need, need to do error management. Error while running the query I don't know you tell me by printing okay and then I'll just return actor or I think everything's done uh, you should just say scan this full all scan full scanned value it's, it's integer so I can write percentage D and then value right the query is successful then we should get 42 as a result and that's it works I need to call this function uh, like let's oops sorry db dot demo function name it
there you go scan successful scan values for it so you understood right how queries works in here but this is not specific to query okay this is just to know that uh, what placeholders are now instead of this for example you can actually give a uh, positional placeholders okay you can just give zero no, so it will actually expect a zeroth for example if you're giving here like 42 32 32 something like that oh, oh what happened beam crashed i guess somehow oh that that doesn't happen <laughs> damn okay in the setting so now we have two values right? what are you supposed to do i'll, I'll just add zero let's see if it works or not okay 42 and what if i'll just replace with one damn 41 see as you can see so these are called a positional parameters okay now what happens is see uh when we uh see currently uh, the thing is it's very small right input and output that's why you'll be able to do that but trust me i've written the queries where you know i was giving like 20 input uh, as a placeholders and what happens is i used to give like on uh, you know the order so now after that you know if you want to remove something right then you have to push everything one step ahead and you know that it gets kind of messy so instead of that what you can do is actually like you know put on this positional parameter so even if you like whatever that you, you know value that you need to change or something right uh, it doesn't affect it why because it's not depend on the order it depends on the position you can actually give the position you know it's that easy okay one more better thing the third thing that i would like to talk about is named parameters okay so it's better than even positional parameters it's called name so okay i'll just create a Rocked, okay uh, type uh, params struct uh, param1 string param2 string okay sounds good mm, interesting now what i'm doing is instead of this i'll be like param1 you see how it's happening right so this is like name parameters but i need to create object of that param so i'll be like params because i need to supply that right so it's gonna be like params uh, param1 is gonna be like uh this is param2 is like this is param2 but when we return we should be expecting so now value will be string okay now i'm written in this instead of all these things i'll be just say params see this is pretty easy right so it should written what this is param1 yes let's see as you can see is can successful scan values this is param one well uh, i stake in here it should have been percentage yes well scan successful scan value is this is param one okay now if you think that oh i don't like this we like param two boom boom oh where the crap that thing went sorry guys for the language mm -hmm. That's it. See, it is that easy, right? You are not actually literally doing anything. See, so these are like three ways you can uh, do placeholdering when you are using Go PG uh, library. You know, uh, this I, I find it really interesting. So one of the thing I find it so interesting is the name parameters. Uh, you all you have to do is just you know create some struct. For example, if you are writing some sort of big query, you just create a struct and put on all the conditions with key value, right? And remember one thing you must. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I'll just finish that thing off. Uh, you can just put that, and you know you can just call it in here. I mean, it's that easy. So one of the other thing is again, it's see, it's not, it's not, uh, it's again uh, parsing with the cam, you know, parsing all the capitalize into the camel case, you know, the separated by underscores and everything. So you have to be like uh, that to understand that uh, thing also so this was all about parameter holders sorry <coughs> sorry placeholders guys uh, 
uh, why I actually had to push this because all the other queries right update or uh, you know uh, delete or select and all the other kind of queries uh, this is must required because you will have all the where conditions and everything right and all the conditions mainly we use name parameters so you have some better idea what name parameters are right so I just thought I should just you know give a tutorial on this before I move ahead with all the delete and ins uh, sorry delete and update and other kind of queries so yeah this was it you know try to learn a little bit about it you know if you have any question you can just uh, shoot me a message you know I would be loved I would love to or more than happy to you know reply you regarding this uh, thank you very much guys hey guys well in this video we are going to talk about how to delete it's gonna be a pretty tiny video because there are just a <clears throat> couple of ways you can delete stuff you know so no big deal uh, okay so I'm just going to okay now we have a product item and everything but you might be thinking that huh I don't want this product item anymore or you think that oh this is I think put you know by mistake or something like that you want to delete it right it's pretty easy create a function product item and uh, just to just create this you know delete item method I'll expect uh, pointer to be dot e error occurs now delete is again pretty easy okay what do you do you do db dot again first of all you select the model a model is what it will actually put uh, your uh, whatever uh, table uh, item is right row into the it load as a serialization thing and then you can do whatever you do so what we are going to do uh, so if you for example if you want simple delete right delete by primary key which is like id you can just do db dot uh, delete and you know you can just give uh, pi but in this case you might need this id because what this does it will create a query call you know delete from table name where id is equal to this okay but mostly i don't think that will be the case if that will be the case that you are deleting by id then you can just do db dot delete and be done with it but in yeah of course whenever you in this pi object you need to have your id set okay yes but mostly that won't happen mostly you will be deleting based on some sort of condition right so how do you do that so simple a db dot first of all you load the model which is uh, pi dot you add the condition where uh, uh, let's say name is equal to placeholder name okay and what should be the name uh, come on give me that give me that give me that okay now that will look at from here only right so we don't need to even give and then delete that's it so i told you right last video tutorial uh it's gonna be placeholders you know name so what happening what is happening in here is when you do db dot model right so now this model pi is in context okay so whatever name placeholders are referring here right that we are that we are referring from this pi uh parameter object you know so that's why we don't need to separately here give any structure because internally it'll, it'll take data from here and then we just have to run delete query okay mm -hmm. I'll, it'll again re a written result and error so it's a result we don't care if there is some delete error then we can just check it out okay delete error is not equal to nil then i'll be just like log dot printf what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be like error while deleting dumb reason could be percentage with error to return delete error printer this full person I dot got it okay let's delete it I'll go to main I uh, will remove this place handle demo yeah. create a function delete item 
speed Punk uh, Elite item Perfect DB ref as pointer so we need to create object remember because we are running we are doing everything <coughs> over that particular object so the new pi is equal to uh, p dot product item i just need to give name because we are referring just name only so name only gonna give what uh, let's delete product 5 set this is what matters and I'm just going to run that thing with DB dot no 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 sorry you can run on new PI because we already have item Oops, sorry I think it should be just delete with the ref okay Okay, DB product. You know, okay, let's let me just go to here and just say delete item. Yeah, so that was the name. Looks good. Out build. Delete successful for product five. Now just take star from product items collection. sort of complete so if you see right product one product two product three product four and product six so product five is gone so this is how delete works you know i mean there is no big deal about it you know you can just write it down easily and it should work ba -ba -ba. another thing is just an experimentation yeah uh, so you got it right it's very easy you just give the condition and you know after that you just delete you load your model in here so this should work fine so but usually if you see right people don't delete that much you know they'll just set some flag is active to false or something like that i mean i don't know they might want the data but yeah remember this still it will literally wipe out your data okay whatever data you're deleting it'll just it, they're gone forever so whenever you are using the delete just be careful Test it out on your staging or development environment before you actually put it in production. Otherwise, you might mess up a lot of things that you might not get recovered unless you have backup or something. So this was a delete, guys. Maybe uh, next tutorial, let's just see how to do updates and stuff. Hey, guys. <coughs> Look who's back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, uh, let's talk about updates, you know. So last video, I talked about uh, delete. So I'm just showing you some uh, some of the promising uh, you know uh, way of doing things. Okay, there are if you if you actually go to the documentation, right? There are like way different different ways of doing things, but these are like the standard way of doing things, you know. So you have to just uh, keep in mind that. Okay, so let's just update something. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to actually update the price of this particular product with the product ID product uh, one. Okay. Uh, sorry id1 i'll just go i'll just uh, go to the database and i'll be like select select star from a product items collection okay so i have like this many one two three four sorry one two four six and seven ids right Hmm. I just want for example this ID one right I just want to change uh, I don't know price to uh, 5.0 and this okay let's see how it works so punk product item okay I'll just say update price function I'll expect a DB as a star PG dot DB okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a query called DB dot uh, first of all we load the particular model in the memory so it's like okay loading uh, putting the context and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like uh, uh, set 
okay a set will take a string which so what do you want to set so i want to set price okay price is equal to placeholder price so whatever price this pi has right we are going to set <coughs> then you can write condition where okay and again placeholder id is equal to question id so whatever id this has it will make it that and then update you know that easy right whenever you do update it will send result and error so result again as usual we don't care update error okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to check update error not equal to then pointer error while a string mm, price reason let's see Better all log dot print align. Uh -huh. Price update date. Or uh, I'll just give this link. Wait, no. Let's see. Pretty simple, right? No big deal. You know. Let's go to main dot here and we have uh so i'm just going to write another function here on the controller side function update item price okay i'll take db ref because we need to pass on dot db so in usual conditions for example right i'm, I'm actually taking just this right but uh, what will happen when we have big pro big uh, project right you will have one context uh, pointer you know which will be a read only pointer uh, where all the database connections and all other configuration will, uh, will be there so you you don't have to pass something like this you just pass that and it should work okay and uh, i'll create a new pi another object it's kind of like this. product item uh in this case we need id okay so id i'm just gonna be putting one we don't care about oh we care about the new price right so whatever you are updating price i'm just gonna be 5.0 these two fields require then i'll be like db dot bi dot get some price boom okay or just update price let's see what it is just update price sometimes autocomplete doesn't work i guess okay it'll uh, expecting db ref now for id1 price should be when it runs should be okay delete success oops sorry Eh, sorry for that. Red item price. PG. File. Price of data successful ID one. See. Start from. Product. Down. ID. Boom, boom. ID is one price five point as you can see. Ta-da! See? So hmm, this is how you do the updates. This is like the minor way of I mean this is like very standard way of doing update. You know, it includes everything, it includes conditions, it includes which uh you know uh columns you want to set and everything. So this stuff should be okay guys so this was uh how you do update with gopg i mean there are other ways of doing updates where you know uh you do up update the whole uh you know structure based on just id which is nothing you just do db dot update and put on that uh, particular object and it will take care of it but that is like i don't think in real see real life you know that <laughs> that should be the case where you literally will be updating the whole item you know you will be updating part of it right so this way this is like this works you know you can actually set this and set another one something like that you know see that string and params you know that so work
uh so this was it guys from update site uh now the only major part remaining is querying now the why i keep querying uh, last because it's kind of like a really uh you know not a big topic but it's uh it's it's where actually you know a lot of con confusion happens right because if you see right inside update delete they're like you know standard way of couple of ways of doing things with, with query you know scanning and this and that requires a lot of stuff so okay we'll uh I talk about it in future lectures so don't worry thank you very much guys hey guys <clears throat> so let's talk about uh queries now you know it's been a long waited i guess you guys must have waited long enough now to learn about queries okay let's not waste uh, so much time and just uh, talk about querying okay let's just uh, first write a simple function where uh, we get the whole data of that particular product item by id right okay to write the function item get something like that okay going to write a query about this it's gonna be uh, get is equal to dot very simple all right so put everything into this and we're done like we'll return that if there is point f What thing do person okay. I just print the value in here, you know. Person, a whole pie is a pointer. I'll just print it out, you know. <coughs> so the function is ready, it's pretty easy. Go here, no. here, okay, then like get new. Get D. I'll just take dbref. <coughs> Sorry for uh, those. It's my throat. It's not that much well today. Pi is equal. I remember this because we just need ID, right? You don't need to create the whole struct. You can create only like this and two one. So something right is equal to one. So I'm going to PI dot ID DB ref it should work D with P good compile. Okay. Hmm. Product forty two. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a good price. Expected new Oh, sorry. <clears throat> that was just totally out of uh, context error, I guess. 
well as you can see in here get by id successful for particular thing right id one product one product one description the details i got it right so this is how you guys do get by id okay now you might be thinking okay this is all good but uh, you know cup uh columns a uh, few columns uh, okay uh, and one other thing i would like to tell you is you can actually write this some um, some well organized way also this is like pretty basic you could write something else like this ID will give positional parameter in your PI. Okay. <coughs> you can write something like this also. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, okay. It should work. Let's check it out. Yes, it's giving me the same result. So this is like more standard way of doing things. As if you've seen all the kind of queries that I'm doing, right? What I do, I actually db dot model. So what happen is, whatever the current uh, uh, struct, right? We are actually putting into the memory. So all the actions that we are doing, right? It will actually affect this pi model. Okay. So for example, we're doing, if you're doing some sort of select statement, right? It will affect the pi. Um, so it will put all the values into this pi. Okay. Uh, so this, whatever this inside this model, if you're doing updates, right? So it will do all the, it will take all the updates from this pi and put it into database. If you are doing insert right then it'll take all the insert from this model pi and then put it into the database and all the actions that you want to do it should be at the last right and before that it should be condition so this is how the whole uh, query that you can define now what if you just want like couple of columns you don't want like uh, you know all the columns uh, you just want like uh, i think name and description you want right well you can do something like uh, can just create a column function you just be like you know give me just a name description i don't want anything uh, these are like the actual uh, fields uh, in the database okay these are like the actual column names we have to give actual okay, so give me a name and description so now whatever it's it'll written run when you run it right it'll just return it should it name and just okay okay because other things are if you see zero right these are zero values you know so so it it will still print the whole object but all other values are zero values for example if you compare with this with this right the date is zero value which is zero 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 and everything so it in a way if you think it just written product one product one description everything else you see this is in edge path and this there is nothing like that why because it's a zero value we are just printing the object that's why so this works okay and now what if uh, you want to do more conditions for example id is this and name thing like that if you want to do <coughs> let me just break it down into column this where this uh, whenever you, you can write multiple words okay write multiple where so this will work as a where this condition and so this is like the end in this okay where it is equal to zero and name is two question one it should be also zero because for this parameter it should be zero. okay the pi dot name need to set name this is like you know give me all the sorry give me just name and description of uh, the data where id is equal to this and name is equal to this okay so to go here and put the name for this 
give you the results yeah it is giving the results so see this works so this is like and and now you will be like okay what about uh, or simple you just give or where or so this will work as a or condition where this should be or this should be so instead of this what will you do and be like id is equal to some static id too okay static id so what this query will build up is give me every sorry give me column and description from <coughs> product uh, item collection database sorry table where id is equal to the specified id or id is to two check it out sorry to compile multiple rows in the result set yes so what happens in here is it'll throw it will give you two rows right because there is id1 and there is id2 so you'll be like okay so how do i deal with that simple uh one thing you can do is actually uh okay so let's just check it I think you can, because this will result multiple right so you just say limit one you should do the trick I can just limit by I think this work yeah as you can see it'll give you product two product two right okay now but what if you want both right I mean it's just not that you will want one so what you do instead of that you actually create another model where uh items is array of product item okay now as I told you right you can put this here you want it right so now it will load multiple so i'll just give two the pi printing i'll print let's see okay we need to give the pointer yes as you can see now we have an array of item with product one and product two so this is how you actually select uh, multiple queries you know you can also do uh, for example some sort of offset for example you just want to do one offset so all the function that you do in the query right you can literally do in here they are all converted to functions to offset this just check it out yeah so it'll just give you product two <coughs> it's keeping the product one because of the offset okay if you do offset two then it'll not it won't return any result you know yeah, and you'll be like, okay, I uh, want to do order by, so you can do that zero, so it should return all two order. I'll give you order by ID. Okay. So it should return in some particular order. Yeah, see product two and product one, right? If I'll make it ID sending it's going to be product one and product two so you can even you know specify which order you want the items and order it can be ordered by time it can be you know ordered by anything that is okay yeah, that can be ordered you know something like that this is how all the queries work uh you can actually uh so these are like the simple queries okay all the joint queries and everything there'll be another video that i'll be uh talking about where uh, you'll be uh, you know seeing all the joint queries and everything but this is like the normal introduction you know the simple components that you will be uh, dealing with on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis you know whenever you because uh, you will need like some specified column you want that you can specify you column function if you want to give the conditions and and all uh, where and where or if you want to specify some offset you can limitation 
you can make it order by and get select particular item you know and you or anything else you can just pass on their product item to another function it will process and it will return to the whatever client you know or client function or call function this was like the introduction to querying and everything guys uh, uh, okay i'll see you in the next uh, chapter i'll be talking about little bit in detail okay bye bye hello guys <clears throat> So in this video we are going to talk about timeouts. Hmm. You must be wondering what is that? I mean you never might never faced it, you know. Because it was all given to you. I mean in when you when it comes to Go and PG and the driver, right? It is also given to you. It's just that I'm saying that how to customize it, you know. So you can customize it when you connect to the database. Okay. Remember the first video where we started connecting to the database? Yes so in the connect method right i'm here in the connect method you know we have a pg dot options uh struct right yes uh so if you hover over that you will see so many parameters right so we are going to talk about some of those parameters today which are important so first thing i'm going to talk about is dial timeout okay so dial timeout is duration so you can just say time dot uh um can sorry time dot duration one oh, you don't need to do that actually you can easily do something like let's just say dial timeout is 30 into time dot second okay so what happens right now is what is dial timeout first of all let me tell you so whenever you are trying to connect to the postgres database right it shouldn't be like trying to connect uh, to the dot database infinitely right you want some some time to time out you know for example if it doesn't connect in 30 seconds you just want to return that particular function and throw some error you know so you will get to know that what is happening you know it's timing out means there is something wrong from the pg side uh, so 30 seconds is again still a little bit high but I'm just saying for the sake of you know uh, giving an options or examples right uh, so this is how you set dial timeout okay see there is no need to do tests and everything because uh, most probably you won't be getting it because uh, setting you know I mean making timeout is kind of like uh, hard in the sense that you know practically it rarely occurs but when it occurs you are can i you know get uh, screwed i guess <laughs> i didn't know how to put it delicately you know so the other kind of timeout that we are going to talk about is read timeout so whenever you are running the read queries right all the select queries and everything uh you might want to put one minute as a timeout because you don't want your query to be running you know like infinitely right because that's a lag that's a connection is already occupied you know you don't want to do that <clears throat> unless you are you know uh you got the you get the cursor and you are like doing some infinite looping or something but that is again a, long, a wrong way of doing programming you know your read timeout should never be one minute it should be 30 seconds or 15 seconds i'm just setting just to let you know this is like the max timeout you should set another one is uh, write timeout okay so whenever you're writing the query <coughs> now why read timeout okay uh, write timeout uh, i'll tell you just for the example i'm just going to put one minute okay now why this read write timeout well whenever you run a query right postgres is actually doing a lot of processing you know and you know for example by mistake you run some sort of a query without limitation you know for example if you are running a query where uh, in the in the database you have for example 100,000 products right and you are running a query <coughs> and uh, you are just you know forgot to get the limit 10 you know and you are literally trying to fetch all the items I mean that's like a big deal you know it might take a while because transferring a lot of data here and there you know at the time your query can time out you know if it's 30 seconds so you can actually visit the query and check out that particular mistake and if possible you find and you can repair that mistake you know so for that are uh, uh, things you need to do that and even if that is not the scenario right you really really shouldn't run any query on your pg more than 30 seconds that's a really really added load over pg you know postgres itself so other we are going to talk about is uh, ideal timeout okay 
I mean uh, this kind of thing uh, you don't chat that much uh, you can put it like 30 minutes now what is ideal timeout is well, ideal timeout is for example if you are doing if you created a backend right and uh, now your um, driver is actually you know have access to 100 connections you know you created a pool of 100 connections right and all the connections are active now you don't get any query or any request from your client for 30 minutes so you don't want to keep going with those connections right you actually want to minimize those connections so this is called ideal timeout this is really useful uh, for controlling you know how many sockets are getting uh, and when your sockets getting you know closed down uh, in terms of low load you know so this is really good if you want to set it out don't set it 30 minutes just set it like somewhat like two minutes five minutes or something okay other thing we are going to talk about is max edge okay that's again time duration Oops, sorry. Time dot. <clears throat> so max edge is related to uh, ideal timeout. You know, it again say how the maximum edge of your connection. You know, so it's uh, it's kind of like that before you do the ping. You know, uh, so what max edge will tell you that you know if. Um, and anything i mean nothing happens for like one minute just do the ping request to the postgres just to let postgres know that we are still here you know and we are active so otherwise postgres will think if the connection is ideal for long right then postgres will think that okay there is nothing happening i should close down this resource so postgres itself will close down the connection you know so that not to happen you need to have max edge and another last setting i would say is a pool size uh 20. okay now what is pool size pool size is max number of connection per cpu remember that so by default uh, the driver will try to uh, you know balance it out a number of connection per cpu which is 10 by default that should be more than enough but if you think that you will be working on really really highly concurrent environment you know when you'll be getting thousands of requests for doing the queries and everything right at that time you might want to set this pool side to little bit higher than 10 okay and remember this is like per cpu so if you're dual core server right then it's going to be 20 connection you know 10 to 10 so if you want to increase down to i don't know like 100 then you have to set pool size 50 so per cpu pool size is going to be like 50 uh, so it should work like that it, it it does work like that sorry sorry for that so these are all the possible options that you should uh you know uh, set in in order to con constrain your resources remember for example if you have really high-end postgres server you know like some big machine you know then i mean these numbers does not matter that much because you already have a lot of resources but i'm pretty sure in all the most of all the case scenarios right you we won't have that much resources you know unless you are in facebook or maybe working in google or something like that <clears throat> so you will have like some small medium size postgres you know to handle very high amount of load so at that time you might want to set all these options to make sure that everything stays you know uh, in working condition for example if you even put some big query or you might set a bug or something right everything should not fall down so for that you need to set all these options you know and keep track of all the options from the postgres side to just make sure that uh, everything is working fine uh, so this was all guys about uh, how to set different different kinds of times timeout and you know pool size and everything uh, so this was it i guess uh, just remember you you need to do this okay whenever you are doing just please make sure you add dial timeout read timeout write timeout ideal timeout that is okay because systematically it will set as ideal so we don't need to because and it doesn't affect the performance it is useful when you know you you literally not getting any requests so it's good and max edge is again something like that so this too can be optional and pool size you need to set guys because otherwise your driver is going to keep opening the connections or in the case of really high load right your driver will won't know what to do and it'll just play around with the max connection which is 10 and you will be you know a lot of requests will be getting stuck thank you very much guys uh for just going through this 
Okay, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to talk about transactions. Hmm, you must be like, if you know Postgres and you work with Postgres and everything, then you'll be like, huh, interesting topic, you know. But if it's first time for you, it's exciting topic because I'm going to automate a lot of your manual work just by just, you know, talking about transactions. You might be thinking, how? Well, let me tell you. So, what are transactions, first of all, okay? So, transactions are nothing, uh, transactions are a block of queries, okay? Uh, that uh, all either succeed or all fail that's it so it's just two uh, two scenarios okay so for example you have a situation where you might want to uh, uh, you know three queries uh, uh, and you know you want all the three queries to succeed and in the case and uh, oh, you started writing queries and everything right and what happened the third query uh, fails first two uh for example you have a three uh you have some sort of a database management system where uh it's pretty critical you know for example the uh, financial system you have and you know uh you have sort of uh, uh, a need to update three records uh for example you just update the uh you know purchase history in the user's profile as well as purchase history in the actually product profile and then you actually do the transaction you know where which user purchased which, which item right and you were able to successfully update uh, the purchase history of user and purchase history of product but you were not able to you know somehow a query fails where you are actually trying to put on actual transaction where the user purchased this item and paid this much amount in advance you know so what happens well as you know it goes down right so to avoid that uh, we have a something called transactions so what transactions does is you have to actually create a block inside the transaction block you write all the queries okay now in case of third query will fail right you can literally just do rollback on transaction so transaction will take care of all the updates that it did right it'll actually go back to the previous version so if it inserted some new rows it'll actually delete it automatically so you don't need to worry about any of that literally it's so good even if you if, uh, for example if you don't use transactions right then you might have to do everything manually you know where if in case of any query fails you have to actually go back and delete those records and stuff like that right i mean come on man that's kind of like you know not so cool so that's why uh the, the concept of transaction is here you know as transaction is nothing it's a block inside where you write all the query when all the queries become successful you do transaction dot commit in case of any error you do transaction dot rollback that is it everything else is same you know okay so let's not talk about theory more and i'll just give you a small example so you guys have a little bit of idea so how to create transaction in go okay transaction or transaction error is equal to it's very simple db dot begin when you do db dot begin it will actually open up the transactions okay uh, it op uh, let me just check error very fast make sure you check all the errors guys because that's really important debugging is really important make right because we were not open to able the transaction open the transactions uh, so that's why uh, we are waiting because we need transaction and it'll be a rare scenario you know that you won't be able to uh, open the transaction or remember it's pretty simple whenever you write the query on db right instead of write the query on transaction that's it every query that works on db will work on transaction why because it's like a block right but it's actually a part of db only you know so all the queries that i taught you in the last uh, few videos right you can literally write all those queries on tx okay now what you do for example see i'm trying to update the price right and what what if the error occurs in here so what i'm going to do is transaction dot rollback so i'm just going to say if i made any change during these transactions right for example sorry if i made any change during this transaction just please roll back everything just remove everything whatever updates that i did 
okay but yes if i am successful then please please commit the transaction remember don't forget to commit the transaction okay otherwise it won't affect and it will keep the connection open and it will cause a memory leak or connection leak you know you don't want that so remember this is really useful feature but it's you need to use it with responsibility okay so this is how transaction works you open the transaction by db.begin and do everything on top of the transaction you don't do db.query no you do tx.query on everything so tx.model id right so currently what i'm doing is i'm actually updating one so let's just try to i will copy this uh okay and i'll just try to paste this okay now what i'm trying to show you is two version of the particular thing okay update uh, error Oops. two two okay so now what i'm going to do i'm trying to update uh maybe let me check what i should update you should update with that um, is active okay so i'm updating the price and then i'm updating is active it should remember one thing you don't need two queries to do the updates okay for simple row i'm just showing off as example uh so just don't think that this is a wrong this is a wrong practice i'm just showing off how transaction works right is equal to this id okay you got it okay that i'll do transaction rollback otherwise i'll do commit okay i'll go to main.go in here and i'll do uh is active false because it was true right okay let's compile it down okay price updated successfully okay is active is null it's showing okay and price is seven but it got updated right but we had a null value okay let's check it out what happened what went wrong we'll go to here and we have is active bool is active active it is pid Hmm. Might want to print that PID in here. I just need to make sure that if that uh, thing is not gone, right? Sorry. I'm getting the fault. Okay. Oh, well, I got the idea, I guess. I think that was the wrong example to do because what happens in here is uh, uh false is a false value right so that's why i guess so if i do something like uh, because if you see it's a zero value false is okay so this and then i'll do you have multiple options pretty good they should do it let's see I 
as you can see it's false now right so both the queries ran uh let's try to update the price to why it's not working i'll tell you know because if you see exactly right so for any boolean false is a null value sorry zero value so that's why this driver thinks that it is a null you know so that for that you might have to use pointers and everything let me know if you get into trouble with those kind of things i'll try to solve your issue no issue at all would be happy to solve that issue you know where to message me right if you see this video just gotta message me now price is nine and this is again false okay so both are updating right so transaction is successful let's see now i would like to fail the transaction yeah so i'll just say something like said this but this column doesn't exist at all and i'm just i want to update the price to 10 okay See, I'm now I'm updating price to 10. Okay, I'll just remove this. This is not required. I'm updating the price to 10, but remember, I'm actually trying to fail this query. So, what will happen is it won't update even the price, it shouldn't, it better not. <laughs> okay, error while updating is active. So, as you can see, price is 9, right. While well, price should update, if you see two queries, price should update and this should throw an error. This query throw an error, but we did drawback, so now price is nine. So guys, this is how transactions work. This is like a very very naive example. Don't worry about it, you know. But you got the idea, right? Inside of this transaction, begin and commit. You know, you write as many number of queries as you want, but you get into trouble. All you have to do is transaction dot rollback, and it'll take care of all the rollbacks for you at uh, you know atomic level so you don't need to worry about that so guys this was transactions okay i see you in the next tutorial hey guys so today we are going to talk about migration okay uh, how to you know because i got a question that oh, i mean uh, i need to do some migration okay all the projects and everything is set up so how would i do migration so i tried you know just looking through the everything uh best viable option and everything and this is one of the library or cl application that i found which is pretty easy it's called goose you know uh, you can just check it out github.com slash presley slash goose it is uh, in my sense the easiest library you can find and pretty uh, productive library you can find when you need to do you know migrations but make sure uh, just mind that you know this will be independent of uh, whatever driver and whatever we are using okay so this is uh, goose you know what uh, it can do you can install easily with go get nothing else no extra dependency and this is how you'll use it you know it supports postgres mysql sqlite 3 and redshift you know all these uh, database drivers it supports with the go and commands are also straightforward you know uh, instead of showing let's just get started what do you think yeah okay so here is our migration folder okay i'm just going to go to cli yes and let's see so go to migration folder but <clears throat> remember that mm, let's just do in it okay so okay how do you create a migration in course so for example you have a basic setup okay you created your database or you created your table and everything you know and now you need a base migration uh, sorry even if you didn't create you can actually create an in it you know um for example goose create in it sql okay now if you see 0001 in it sql is created right if we go to 000 in it sql as you can see in here see all the files gonna be like this only okay but versioning goose will take care of it uh but uh as we already have created in it right we won't be going for the in it so i should be delete the 001 it doesn't matter you know actually yeah you can start uh, from anywhere you are and goes will take care of it so we'll do <coughs> let's just say that we need to add one column okay so in our product uh, products table right and we think that huh okay what if uh, i need to give some extra name to product um, maybe secondary name <coughs> 
so let's see how we are going to do the migration because we might want to store that information in db right so what i'm going to do goose product secondary name <coughs> update tk and i want as sql oops sorry need to create okay now if you see i have this file okay now i'm gonna go to migration i'll create as you can see the file is here right so what i'm going to do and remember you don't uh, you cannot delete these comments okay these are for goose specific uh, um, commands so you can delete this sql you know but goose up and goes down is actually you know up and downing of your migration you cannot delete that okay so just below the goose up right you can write whatever you want to add okay so what we're gonna do Alter table product terms that is our table name product items collection add column mm, what was that secondary broad secondary name good all default empty sounds good let's see if it's uh, error edit i don't know why <coughs> beam is showing that but let's see and now goes down is what what you write for example what if you are not satisfied with this migration how you will roll back your migration right that you write under goes uh town so what is my logical solution what i'm going to do i'm just going to do all sorry alter table product terms collection pro call okay so it's easy so when i uh, for example for this particular version of migration right i want to add one column in this table but it doesn't go as expected i want to roll down roll back whenever i roll back i actually want to drop this particular column right so this sounds like a viable thing uh, okay let's do this So how do you run your migration? So goose, okay. I already have that command because you need to run it in Postgres, right? So this is how you run your migration. Migration, goose, and the driver that you want to use for database, and you provide your credentials, user, DB name, cell mobile password because that's required because goose is going to connect to that. Uh, then it's going to do all the migrations and everything. don't worry about the state goose will take care of the state over there in the db only okay we'll run up command first of all we run status command okay so as you can see in here right we created this migration we'll do up okay i think uh, we have something else already running so i'll just going to do down <coughs> oh sorry uh this is because uh, i need to reset the goose i guess and if you see right we have a so we need to drop goose db version table and goose migration drop table Because it will store your state over there, right? Okay. Now let's see. Status. Okay. <coughs> As you can see see this is how you can reset your goose you know you can just delete the table and all the states will be gone you can restart it if you mess up somewhere just like i did okay <laughs> so 
uh, when you do go status right it will show that how many migrations are pending and where we are and how many migrations are done right so this is our first migration you know it'll, this is like the base migration so let's do up when you run up okay it it will actually whatever migrations you have written it will actually try to you know implement all the migrations so for me it's just i have one that's why if you do status again it'll be like see this migration was applied at this date and this migrations right it will give you really useful information okay and you will be like okay uh, first of all let's go and see if that column is there now <coughs> well as you can see it's there product secondary name text not null default empty text right so as you can see the migration was successful now I will be like, oh man, mm, I don't want to do this migration. I just want to roll back. All you have to do is just goes down and it will go down to one version. Okay, it won't go down to all the version. It will go down to one version of my down. Okay, but as you know, we just had one version. As you can see that that column is gone now. See, so it's pretty easy with the goose, you know, to just go up, down, up, down, up, down. Now you'll be like, okay, hmm. let's do the status. If you do status right, it'll again show pending. Why? Because we actually roll down, so this migration is now pending. Okay. Now, if you want, you can do some changes and everything in the migration, where wherever you messed up, you know, and you can just I don't know, so you know, update it and then again try to run it. Uh, if you have uh, multiple migrations and stuff, well, you can just do something like up to. So for example, uh, so there is another call, uh, command called up to. You can do up to. <coughs> Whatever version you want, we'll do up to one because we just have one, right? As you can see, we ran through that and goes no migration run. Current version is one, so here is our version. Current version is one because we ran this one uh, migration, right? So this is how the versioning works in goes. Okay, you can just do see. Uh, okay, so it's normal concept, you know. For example, you have if you have four pending migrations, right? So up will try to resolve all the pending migrations. It'll try to finish it off and it'll update the version accordingly. Okay, for every migration, it's gonna be one version up. But when you do the goose down, right? It'll just try to go down one version, not all the version, right? But you, if you think that you want to go down like three version, you can just down two this version okay our current version is one okay so i can just say down to version zero as you can see now it's no migration and current version is zero which is our base version right so this is you can <coughs> this is how you work with this goose okay see it's simple you do you just do goose create you know sql file will create okay then you do all of your up and down queries that you want to write whatever you updates you want to make and in case of some error whatever rollbacks you want to do okay uh, you write it over there in the sql file okay and goose will take care of everything else you don't need to worry about versioning and everything okay then after that once you are satisfied with your sql you can just do goose whatever database you're running and all the credentials and stuff and you can just say up and it'll just go down up all the sql files that you have written and it'll update the version accordingly now if you think that huh i don't need this you know my god i just made a mistake and you want to go down you don't need to panic or anything all you can do is just say goose postgres credentials and down you know boom one version down whatever updates you made roll back that easy you know so this is like i mean i went to like three four drivers trust me and uh, i couldn't find anything as usable as, as goose you know so that's why i thought i should guys you know create a tutorial for you and uh, tell you that migrations with goose are really good and you should go with it don't complicate the migrations trust me just you know because i've i've seen a couple of drivers where migrations are so much complex you know you have to write a lot of code and everything i was like no no man that's that that's not what it's supposed to be you know so well so this is goose and all golang migrations i guess uh just if you need if you have any questions or anything just ping me i'll be always happy to help you guys thank you